Hello, Open Skies Giver Church. This is your pastor, Peggy Masigane. I really hope that you guys are doing great, are doing good. We are praying for you. We pray for you every day that your faith may remain, that your faith will go stronger and stronger and stronger. We love you. We miss you. Uh, this weekend, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be introducing my wife, Z Masigane. She's going to be bringing a powerful word to you. Be blessed. Uh, if you need anything, if you need to talk to us, we are available. You can SMS us, WhatsApp us, Facebook us. Uh, just talk to us. Keep in contact with us. We'd like to know how you guys are doing at home. Otherwise, be blessed by the word of God today. Hello, Open Skies Giver, and I hope you guys are doing great and your families are keeping strong. Remember to draw your strength from God and remember the scripture that says, um, he gives strength to the weary and he increased the power of the weak and you are constantly in our prayers and I hope that you guys are supporting each other during this time continue to listen to our preach every Sunday you're gonna get them every Sunday so please be encouraged and stay connected to God earlier this year uh, Bex and I we were ordained to become the lead pastors of Open Skies Giver and we had to pray and ask God for the word for the year. And we really felt like God gave us the word that we needed to go deeper. Little did we know that we were going to be hit with this um, epidemic during this time where actually we can't meet together as a church. We have to be at home. And But you can go deeper alone with God. You can seek God um, through scriptures, through prayer, through worship during this time. And I believe that this is a very crucial time for you guys to grow deeper in the knowledge of God and also for God to do a deeper work in him. And I hope that you are allowing the Holy Spirit to do the deeper work within you. And the scripture I want to remind you that I want to read is found in Colossians chapter 3, um, verse 16. It says, let the message about Christ in all its richness fill your lives teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives sing some psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to god with thankful hearts so i believe that during this time and god was preparing us and growing us from brain, uh, being baby christian into mature christian now we no longer no longer needs to take in milk now we need to take in solid food. So I hope during this time you really are feeding your souls because that is all that matters. Because otherwise, if you don't do that during this time, it's going to be a very difficult time. We don't want you to fall apart. We want you to keep strong. And we long for the time where we can come together and worship Jesus again freely together. So last time I spoke, I really spoke about... Um, a topic that said come come out of hiding so I was really talking about the issues that we do face and those issues that we hide um, within ourselves and also we hide behind things um, behind work behind whatever it is that we do and I believe that, that during this time God is gonna expose those things and we're gonna have to um, handle them and we have to deal with them address them heads-on during this time um, and I just want to continue to encourage you to allow Jesus in because the Bible says that he's knocking at the door and we must allow him to come in. In those areas where we've locked them away, we even took the keys and throw them away. And I believe that during this time, he's actually bringing everything back because he wants us to be restored and whole again. Um, there's a scripture in um, 2 um, Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5, where Paul is talking about this war that we have that, that we people are faced with and um, he speaks about it and he says these things that we go through he says in, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 chapter 5 chapter 10 verse 3 to 5 he says this um, in a living translation he says we are human but we don't wage war as humans do we use God's mighty weapons not worldly weapons to knock down the stronghold of human reasoning and destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacles that keeps us, keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellion thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. And I believe that all this battle and these issues that you are faced face with, whether it's rejection or it's hurt or it's 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 
bitterness and forgiveness those things they keep us from knowing God and Paul is talking to us as the church and is teaching us that those things we actually cannot exalt them above God we need to allow them to obey God those things we need to teach them we need to take those thoughts captive because I believe these things they start small with a small pure thought and it becomes big and eventually it, it, it we allow it to exalt itself above God um, I don't know about you, I really want to know God more, but we cannot know God unless we, we allow these things to bow um, under the authority of Christ. Um, you know, uh, we cannot, we can't hide anyway. Um, you know, in saying all these things, I, I want to say this, I know that your experiences are real and they're not small and there's pain attached to it and there's difficulty um, in this world anyway Jesus does tell us that in this world we will be faced with trouble but we must take heart because he have he has overcome the world um, but all I'm saying is that no matter how big or how small those experiences and those painful thoughts and, and feelings that we have no matter how big they are but they are not bigger than God so therefore we cannot exalt them above God God always must be on the throne and they must go under. We must teach them. They need to obey Christ and we must teach them to obey Christ. How do we do that? All those thoughts, all those things that come, all those negative thoughts, all those feelings that come flooding our, our minds, we need to take them captive. We need to speak to them. We need to speak to them so they can obey Christ. Um, I know for me during this time of um, lockdown, some of the experiences that I've, that I've had um, was um, the fact that there has been times where I was faced with some negative emotions that just came bubbling out of nowhere and nothing, nobody said anything, nobody upset me, but all of a sudden I was just overwhelmed with hurt and pain and these things and I didn't know where it came from. And I just realized that in some areas of, of my life, I've thought that I have been healed, but I wasn't. And because sometimes we think that we are healed until there's a trigger. And things that trigger something, then those emotions come back. It's because I have tucked them down, deep down somewhere, and God is taking everything out and speaking to me and doing a very deep work within me. And in areas of rejection, where I felt rejection, before and struggling sometimes to to receive love or to give love and god is showing me those things deep within me that i didn't know that existed and i am confronted with them but i am not allowing those thoughts to consume me i'm not allowing them to to be exalted above god uh, god is always going to be on the throne i cannot allow them to consume me and overwhelm me i I acknowledge them that they they I acknowledge that they they but I need to bring them to Christ so they can ob obey him um, and I know that sometimes when I've been faced with these things before I had things to blame I, I had work to blame I, I was working too hard or I, w I didn't have enough sleep um, or somebody upset me but no they've said something that triggered something that was already there something that already existed that i haven't dealt with they didn't know that it existed they just said something but because i haven't dealt with it whatever they said i've allowed it to upset me to bring back those negative experience and 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 emotions and things that happened to me and i've allowed those things to keep me from knowing god and keep me from understanding the love of god the, the, the Bible says that in Romans, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Nothing, nothing. So I cannot allow those thoughts to separate me from understanding the God and the love of God. I cannot allow them to be exalted above um, what I do. So yeah, um, we might think that you are completely healed in some areas until there's a trigger. So we need to allow God to actually expose those things during this time because the Bible does speak about God exposes those things into light, those things that we have kept into darkness. He wants to expose them into light so that he can help us 
we cannot do it on our own he is the one that gives us strength he gives strength to the weary and increase the power of the weak we are weak we cannot do this that's why paul says we are human but we don't fight like human do we don't use the, the weapons that human would do the talking the verbally abusing the accusing we don't do that we don't do that god wants us to fight differently and i believe that everybody has this internal battle that we we are fighting and 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 these battles are very dangerous because even if you share to some people they they don't get them you could be going through something that is so painful and find a friend and confide and talk about it and they would never be able to feel the same way you are feeling they might feel some level of emotions and some pain um, and and sorrow and maybe compassion towards you but they're not in the situation they so they don't understand what you're going through so we see this thing similar experience happen to jesus before he he was about to, to to get crucified so he's going through this and he takes communion he's sitting with his friend to talk about who's going to betray him and eventually now the time has come so he says to, to his disciples come with me and he says he choose some of his best friends he says come and pray with me and we find in the scriptures that when jesus took few steps ahead of them and began to pray and that his friends fell asleep because they were not in the same situation even though he had explained to them that my soul is in deep anguish they didn't understand what he was saying they didn't feel what he was feeling so these things we are faced with it actually shows that we actually have to fight this internal battles with god because people are never going to get it that's why when we're going through something and you tell somebody and you're expecting them to support you all the way through and maybe they couple of days they send you sms's and thereafter they stop it's because they're not in the situation and we take offense because we feel like we've talked about things that were very deep and things that were very hurtful to us and we're expecting support and something. People don't get it because they can't see it and they can't feel it. So let's read in Matthew chapter 26, verse, verses 36 to 43. It reads like this. And Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. And he, and he said, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he became anguished and distressed. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. He went on a little further and bowed with his face on the ground, praying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to the disciples and he found them asleep. He said to Peter, couldn't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you would not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, my father, if it is if this cup cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. God, sometimes in a situation that we face this internal battle, it might feel like our closest friends are asleep. They're sleeping, they can't see what is going on. Even though you just say, I know they should understand that if a person is going through this, this is how you should support them or talk to them and, or say something. Sometimes it's not like that. It's God teaching you to fight. And I've had people phoning me, sometimes sending me SMSs and wanting me to pray with them. Sometimes I respond straight away, sometimes I don't. The reason why I do that is because I want to teach them to fight for themselves because I cannot be fighting for them, they need to learn how to fight. Because if I do take that position, it means that I have exalted myself above, above God. God is the one that should give them strength. God is their source. God is the one that needs to 
walk them through that journey. I can be there as a support, but as soon as it's become like a, a thing of like, I must be phoned and get SMSs every time and I must respond quickly, then it's not healthy for them. They need to learn that the way we fight these battles, we need to fight this thought because I can speak scriptures, I can say things, but you as a person are the one that needs to apply the scriptures and begin to speak, even if you don't see the results, begin to speak against the negative thoughts, begin to speak against these feelings of rejection, of love, and begin to and, 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 and ask God to show you this anger, bitterness, and ask him to replace it with love and peace and patience and all of those good things that God speaks about in his scriptures. So during this time, and I think God was preparing us as a church that we as pastors are not the answers. He is. He's the one that needs to be exalted. And he was training each and every one of you guys to be mature Christians so that during this time, not only Bex, myself, or Vonnie and Roger, or any of us people need to be SMSing you guys and phoning you. You need to rise up and go deeper. You need to mature the, during this time. You need to be the one that need to find out how your neighbor is doing, how is everyone doing. Even though we are praying for you and we are phoning you, we cannot phone all of you guys, but we are asking you to take this time to ask how's your friend doing, ask how your neighbor is doing, phone each other, SMS each other, because during this time, it's the time where God needs you to rise up and shine, clothe yourself with strength and begin to speak, to address issues, help other people. But you cannot do that thing unless you yourself are in a healthy place. That's why I said when I started, I hope that you are feeding your soul because that's where everything starts and it ends. So there's some points that I wanted to, 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 uh, to, to just maybe mention about the internal battles. One is the fact that no matter how hard you explain or to other people, they would never, ever, ever have the similar feelings that you are feeling about the situation. And another thing that you need to just understand, they might leave you in the middle of the situation. And you need to understand that you are not alone. God is with you. And those fights are for you and God to fight, not for anyone else. Because during this, those times, it's a time of growth and where you go very deeper with God and God does some deep, amazing work within you that only he can only do with you, the two of you. If you invite the crowd, it's not going to be the same. And also, they would not, they're not going to get it. Another thing is that sometimes there are feelings or emotions that you actually cannot explain using words because they're just so deep. But the Bible says that if we pray in tongues, sometimes only the Holy Spirit will understand what we, we're saying. So those things, do those things, pray in tongues, do, have worship, pray to God. Even if you can't pray, pray in tongues because when we do pray in tongues, our human understanding we don't understand what we're saying, but the Holy Spirit understands what we're saying and intercedes on our behalf. Draw strength from God, not people, because people are going to leave you. People are going to let you down. People are going to disappoint you, including myself. I will disappoint you. God is the one that does not sleep nor slumber. God is the one that will be able to fill those deep feelings and emotion, emotions with you God is the one that is going to be with you during the night time, during the daytime, in the morning, in the situation. So you need to invite him to be part of your journey. Draw strength from him. The last thing that I want to say is that do not allow offense to come in. So if your friends or your family or anyone does not stay with you during this journey, do not be offended with them. Because sometimes it could be the fact that they don't understand the intensity of the situation that you are facing. Or it could be that they felt it, but then those feelings went away. But for you, you are constantly in the situation, so you cannot leave the situation. You understand it better than them. Even if you try to explain it, they're not going to get it. So the one that will get you is truly God. So you need to go to him. So the scripture, the final scripture that I want to read to you guys, it's found in Philippians chapter 4. Before I read the scripture, I want to say that we have the power 
to overcome these thoughts, to overcome these emotions, to overcome these things that we battle with because God has given us authority. So we need to take authority over them. We need to um, speak to them so they can obey Christ. So we need to be talking to these things. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Verse 9. Keep putting into practice all you learned and received from me, everything you've heard from me and saw me doing. Then God, of, the God of peace will be with you. So let me pray for you guys. So Father, I just want to thank you for every single member that you have entrusted into our care, Father God. I pray that during this time, whatever it is that they're going through, Father God, I pray that they will run to you and they will know that you are their shelter. You are the one that will understand them. You are the one that gives strength. You are the one that protects. You are the one that love, loves unconditionally. Father, I pray that you will help them to get deeper in you, Father God, for themselves, Father God, first, before they can um, speak to each to other people. So I pray, Father God, your protection over their families, over them during this time. I thank you, God, that no harm will befall them, Father God. I thank you, Jesus, for your good promises over them. I thank you that even, Father God, as I speak about these deep issues and about these things, I pray for your peace. And I pray for your restoration and I pray for your healing over every single heart, Father God, that gets to listen to this message. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just speak to them and touch them in a deeper way, Father God. And I thank you for your comfort. I thank you for your love. I thank you, Father God, that you are a great God. I exalt you above every other thing, Father God. I thank you that all of these things cannot be exalted above you. I thank you that you sit on the throne. You are high above every other thing. Every knee, every tongue shall bow because your name is great. So I give you honor and glory in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.